What's going on you awesome creatives? In today's episode, we're going to be jumping into Illustrator and taking a look at how to create some isometric 3D side drawings. These drawings are awesome to illustrate different things that you're going to be placing on your site, such as berming, trees, forest, parks, seating, and that kind of thing. So let's jump into Illustrator and get started. Alright guys, so I've just opened up um, Illustrator and you'll be normally greeted with this kind of document setup. We're just going to go A3 landscape at the moment. So let's hit create. So you got these three different diagrams. I'm not going to complete them all today, just to save time and keep this tutorial nice and short. But whatever principles that we learn here in Illustrator, you'll be able to roll in and kind of create whatever kind of side diagrams you want to do. As a side note, if you'd prefer to make these in SketchUp and Photoshop, jump into Show Up Better's channel. He's created an awesome, awesome tutorial on that. I'll put a link down in the description. I prefer to use Illustrator for these because Illustrator is a vector-based program. You can then scale them up depending on what your needs are later on so I'll actually create these as I'm going through a project and then that way when I get to the end of the project I can just throw them on my presentation panel right at the end gal them up as needed so that's why I prefer to use Illustrator than Photoshop but if you guys do want to check out a Photoshop tutorial then check out Show Up Better's channel link in the description but anyway guys let's get started all right so first up we're gonna grab our rectangle tool and we're gonna just create a rectangle now before I do that I am just going to throw a grid on here. So new layout over here, I can just click grid. Um, if you've got an older system, this properties panel is pretty new um, in new CC 2018. If you don't have it, um, just quickly Google how to throw up a grid because I completely forget. But anyway, um, got a rectangle here. All right, I'm just going to create a square and we've got it there. Now I don't want to fill in there. You can see that there's a white fill. So I'm going to remove the fill. Right, by clicking that button there. So now we've just got that there. Right, now what I'm going to do is just scale this up. Now, bear in mind, it takes a little while to get this set up. Give us a minute, and then um, then we can kind of jump in. Right, so we're going to do a non-uniform scale here. Vertical needs to go up 86.062. Right, hit OK. This is going to change our kind of scale of it. Right, our next step is going to shear our our now object right so we've got our shear here we can double click on that again and we're now going to shear it 30 degrees right that's going to now skew it kind of like that all right and now one final step before we get started is we're now going to use our rotate tool over here on the left hand side double click on that and we're going to rotate it negative 30 degrees all right so now we've got our um, axon or isometric kind of um, image there all right and on this we're going to build stuff all right, so this is the basis or the foundation of which we're going to draw our diagrams. Now what I like to do is put these in a separate layer. So we've got our layer one here, and I also like to change this, and I'm going to do dotted lines by going into here, into our stroke. All right, and I'm going to put in dashed lines, and I'm probably going to change the color of it as well, just to a magenta pinky color. All right, just so that it stands out as we're doing our other kind of um, diagrams on top of this. All right. Now next thing to kind of get that 3D look is we're just going to put that up. So now we've got a bit of depth happening as well in which to build upon. All right, so that's the very, very basics of where we're going. The other thing I kind of like to do is because predominantly you're going to have some paths coming through is I like to hit our line tool and then just add in some nice paths. Now to do this, if you want these perfectly straight, what I recommend doing is clicking down here and dragging out to that corner. Alright, you can then hit V or grab your mouse tool and drag it up and locate it along there. Right, now this is because the way I, the reason I do this is because you're going to be doing multiple diagrams and they might all have paths or some of them might. So in order to keep your paths the same thickness and whatnot, I just prefer to create them here as a guide as well. Right, the other thing you want to do is just create a little bit of depth. Now holding down shift key, it'll snap down straight away and in order to have the same length we can just hit alt and drag that over all right back into line key hit down the bottom all right and there we go all right so now we've got our overall site and then we've got our path here now i'm going to just group these up just really quickly you can join them as well i'm not going to bother at the moment because i don't think i need to all right and i'm just going to group these Alright, so that can be my path thickness for later, so I can just throw that over there. 
Alright, just so we don't have to deal with it right now. Alright, now jumping back into our layers, let's start a new layer up. Alright, and this is where we're going to now build upon and create our diagrams, right? So I, I can now lock this previous layer, so I can't make any changes to that. We now have to change our colour back down to black or whatever colour you want to do instead of that magenta pink. Alright, and from here we can start building upon these, right? So I'm going to grab our, um, our line tool and I'm just going to start to drag these up. And obviously we now need to change away from our dotted. We no longer want a dashed line, we just want the solid. And it looks like these aren't quite lining up, so give me two seconds, we're just going to line these up right now. Alright, so that's better. So I'm just going to lock that again. Alright, so we got our thickness there and now we can start growing along here. So I'm going to create like a beach scene. Maybe we'll have some water washing up, maybe a path, and then maybe a um, berming up in the back that children can play on or something. Nice and simple. If you guys want to create stairs and whatnot, just have a play with your lines. You've got the perspective up and it's pretty easy. But alright, let's have a crack. Alright. So we've got this. Now, obviously, this is the thickness I want for the dirt. So if I have a, a ocean or a kind of pool area kind of sweeping up into this, it's not going to be quite that thick. So I'm going to grab the pen tool, going to select here on this initial part, and by clicking and dragging, I can start creating a little bit of ripples to kind of come down and collect up into there. Hit B to come back in, and now I can hold down Alt and drag that up into here as well. Alright, so obviously we don't want these lines quite as long, so we can now drop these back down. And then we can connect that up where we actually want it to. Alright, so this is pretty much the basis of what you're going to be doing. That's a little off-center. I'm not going to continue to worry about these being a little off-center, because at the end of the day, it's just the principles of trying to get across. Right. If you do want to get rid of that kind of little wedge, you can click your two things, right click and click join, and it'll create a nice clean line. Sometimes it can be a little bit funny, but just play with it and you'll start getting these nice clean lines kind of happening. Alright, so coming back over into our major major diagram, we're now going to connect up where our water's going to go up to, and then we're going to then kind of pull this across. And we're going to have grassing out to maybe about there. And then maybe let's put in a path from there. So from there we can grab our, our path that we kind of created before. And that way we know that we're definitely going to have the same thickness. Drag that across. Slot it in, right? And then what we're going to do is just connect these up. Just to have a little bit of thickness. Alright, so we got our path there sorted. And I'm just going to... Put this along as well. Just drag it along nice and easy. Alright, now I'll show you this guys while I'm here. We're going to connect this up. Now if you hit your C key, alright, it'll allow you to cut. Alright, so I've just hit C, clicked where that intersection, now I can kind of cut that little line off and then I can join these two up. Alright, now we can kind of come back into this and just join up our little path. So this is obviously going to be our grassed area. And then let's create some berming in the back end here. So again, a little bit of grass on the other side of the path. And then let's jump into our pen tool by hitting P. And oh, before we do that, I want to draw up from here to roughly the height that we want to go on the berming. So I only want to go maybe a small berm. So I'm going to go up to here. And that'll just give us a guide to kind of aim for. Now grabbing our pen tool again, we're now going to click down in here. Alright, and unfortunately this is going to be a little bit steeper than I wanted, so I'm actually going to cut it off. And then use that C tool again to kind of cut that. Alright, so now I've got that berming happening, and I can then grab these two, slide them across, and line them up where I want to. Alright, so now I've got that kind of matching up. We can then connect our tops of these. Alright, and if I hide the bottom layer, you can kind of see that this is already starting to take effect where we've got our water happening, a bit of grass, and then our berming up in here, and our path down in the center. Alright, so now obviously we don't need this line, so we can delete it. Alright, and then I'm going to just turn our guides back on really quickly, because now we need to line up this line here, and that line up the back. Alright, pretty simple. 
and we're going to jump into colouring it pretty soon. Uh, however, there's one little thing I like to do to kind of show contours, and that's where I want to grab my line, drop the line weight just down slightly, so down to 0.5 is what I usually go, and then I'll just line these up. So I'll just turn off that visibility, and you can kind of just see here that I'm just slowly lining up. Alright, so now we've got that, and then obviously if I want to add some contouring down into the bottom here, I can do that as well. I'm only going to add maybe one or two because I'm really not that concerned about down bottom here because it is just diagrammatic processes. Alright, so now I've got two options. I can either colour this or I can start creating some trees. I'm going to create some trees really, really quickly. Alright, now to do very simplified trees, you can just do a simple line and I've got to increase my line weight again. And then you can just grab your oval tool or eclipse tool and just kind of do basic proportions and then snap it in where they kind of kind of equal there. Right, and then we can obviously just change this to a greeny color. Right, and there's our very, very basic tree. Now I like to keep these pretty simple, especially preliminary drawings. You do have other options if you want to. Um, there is a, up here, we've got our symbols. And if you go into load, you can go into nature, into our symbols. And if you really, really want to, you've got different grasses here, and you've also got different trees. All right, but I think those are a little bit generic, and I like to keep them a little bit more simplified. But it's up to you guys, and obviously you guys can create your own trees as well. I just personally like to keep them nice and simple, so it's not taken away from the renders or whatever else I do later on. Alright, so from here you can grab your trees, and you can kind of plonk them down wherever you want. Obviously that's far too big, but it's easy enough to scale it down, right? And we can throw in a couple of trees. I always work from this back corner forward because if I try and go backwards, you'll find that it now looks like my trunk is behind, but all the leafy is in front. So try and work from this back corner um, across the top and then work your way down further. All right, and I'm putting that on the path, which I don't want to do. All right, now I'll usually leave the trees to last and I'll show you why. It's because our next tool is grabbing the, the live paint bucket tool which is over here, hit K, right, and what you need to do though is select all of the things that you want a live bucket tool first up. You can see there the trees are now in the way, so I'm going to actually delete these off and come back in and we'll put them in later. Alright, so again, we select everything, grab our live bucket tool, alright, and this is going to make a live paint group. So, we can click this, and you can see now it's now starting to section it off. Alright, so now I can grab different swatches depending on what I want to colour it. Now I'm going to not really do custom colours because I'm just going to keep this very basic. And we're just going to go brown on the side. And that'll probably be blue because we'll have um, the ocean. So we'll grab a blue colour next. Now of course I can kind of grab... Oh. If I really want to, I can kind of grab different colours that I want. So we had the water coming down and through here, and up into there. And of course I can try different colours on this as well. And we can try and change our green, and our, our live bucket tool. And we can obviously have our berming kind of up over the top. And just for concrete or pathing, I just choose a simple super grey. There we have it. Now, obviously I don't overly really like these colours too much, but I'm not going to pause it and kind of fix them up because you guys get the idea, right? And there's not too much of a contrast between these, so I'm actually going to actually change this colour. Alright, so I've changed the colour now, and now I can just, working from the left hand side down the bottom, we can then start to group these trees up, depending on how I like. And of course you guys can bring, you guys can change the, um, the sizing if you really want to, but for this tutorial I'm not really going to worry about it. And that's pretty much it guys. So now when I export that I'll be able to scale it up to the different standards I want. Maybe throw in a couple little people. If you want to grab a stencil of people you can throw those in. Um, kind of work same as Photoshop brushes and you can just use your stencils to kind of create um, people in here so they scale up as well. But anyway guys, until next time, have an awesome week and I'll see you on the next video.